Pat Farbaugh with St. Francis head men's basketball coach Rob Krimmel. A couple of games this week. Hit the road. We're taping this on Wednesday. They'll hit the road later today. They'll take on Greg Horrenda's Fairleigh Dickinson Knights on Thursday in Teaneck. That game tips at 7 p.m. And then on Saturday, quick turnaround. The Mount visits for a 4 p.m. game on the 12th. Both games on Front Row. Rob, thanks for joining me. Oh, always a pleasure, Pat. A couple of tough games last week. Bryant and Merrimack here at home. The game against the Warriors on Saturday went to OT fans. It was a one-point loss, came down to one possession. And yes, we want to win games, but I want to talk about some of the positives that I noticed uh, mm -hmm. in calling the games from the court side. The maturation of Josh Cohen. He had 26 and 10, as well as five assists against Merrimack. Yeah. The development and growing confidence of a couple of guys, Luke Ruggery and Brad McCabe. Luke is on the show. Brad, 11 points of career high. Hit three trays against Bryant. A highlight reel <clears throat> dunk uh, against Merrimack. And then extend a little further, and you can touch on whatever you want, but the consistency of a couple of guys. The numbers Max Land is putting up night in night out while averaging better than 33 minutes a game and then marlon hargis uh flirted with a triple double uh, against merrimack he had 15 uh points five rebounds and i beg your pardon seven points eight rebounds six assists against merrimack these growing pains but we're seeing what the the fruits what we hope will see be the fruits of it down the road yeah and that's the the one, one of the uh you know, the, the verses in the Bible is actually a daily devotional is, you know, keep doing what is right and eventually you will reap, I'm paraphrasing, reap the fruits of those labors. So to your point, it's these guys keep doing what is right. And sometimes doing what is what is right does not end up in a win in a game, right? So you got to keep doing those things. And I think Brad is a great example of that. You know, is, is someone who was on our scout team for the better part of two and a half, you know, three years and um, even up to this point, he was on the scout team getting ready for Bryant and getting ready for Mary Mac and um, has had his share of ups and downs, you know, with things he's had to overcome with some injuries and some illness and a lot of different circumstances. But the young man keeps coming to work every day and doesn't make an excuse, doesn't um, you know, have a bad attitude. And I think he wishes his success came a little bit earlier. But again, as a coach, when you can point to someone like Brad and say, hey, listen, if you keep working, you know, it's not just keep working hard. Hey, you got to get in the gym. Hey, Brad, you know what? Have a couple practices where you dominate on both ends. Hey, Brad, you know, whatever it is that he can do to add value and embrace that role. And when you embrace that role, you're going to get your opportunity. So as a coach, you know, those are the things that you need to have happen within the program. So you can point to those examples and, you know, Josh's maturation and, and the way he's played for us and to have a, a person like that, a player like that, that can, you know, play around the basket and facilitate when he's away from the basket is certainly a weapon. And Max has been very productive for us and you know Marlon is a young man who's had to play a couple different positions and because of you know people in and out of the lineup and when you look at those two games this past weekend both under two minutes were one point games and you know another situation where at the end of the game Pat we had you know it's a game of inches you know you think Three back shots. to Right. And you think back to the, the, the GW game or the OU game and, you know, even the, the LIU game on the road or, you know, these guys are right there. They're right there. And I looked up on the court and I think the combination that we had against Bryant in the final three minutes, I don't know that that group had played three minutes together all year. And but, you know, at the same time, that's the only way you get experience. That's the only way you can grow and learn. You can try to simulate it in practice. You put some fans in the stands and you have our band and cheerleaders and you know, the other team, obviously. Sometimes you got to take some some bumps before you can move forward. But the thing about this group and, you know, it, it kind of like Brad is that microcosm of, of, of the, the group. They keep they keep coming to work. They keep doing what is right. They keep, you know, wanting to put a product on the floor that, that not only they can be proud of, but their family and the fans. And we'll keep we'll keep chopping that wood. You know, it's, it's the old saying, right? The, the, the tree didn't fall down in one chop. We got to keep chopping. Maybe it's going to take a thousand for us. And it's different for each team different for each group, different for each program, and we'll keep going, Pat. Keep going. 11 points Brad had against Brian. He had that putback dunk. They got some play on social media, but he had eight boards against Merrimack, and he hit the glass hard against Brian. That's one uh, attribute to his game, I think, that uh, you do that, you're going to get opportunities. And, and really, it's why he got his opportunities against Bryant and against Merrimack. He, he can shoot the basketball, and I don't think anybody in our program will dispute that and what he displayed 
in the in the game against Bryant and then you know against Mary Mac. He's a really good rebounder, and that's one of the things down the stretch we've got to be able to rebound the basketball. And so we got to play our guys that rebound, and uh, it, it also helps that he can shoot the ball on the other side of it too, and, and, can, and can make some plays. But uh, you know he, he adds a different dimension because he can stretch the floor. It opens up things for Max and Ramirez. You know, opens up things for guys that. You know, when the floor's tight, it becomes harder to drive those gaps, right? But when you have someone that can stretch the floor, you know, him and Luke can both do that. Marlon can do that. You know, Miles, when healthy, can do that. You know, those are all things that can help us continue to build and continue to grow. I also want to talk about Josh. 26, 10, and 5 against Merrimack. Averaged a double-double last week. He was a primetime performer uh, as recognized by the Northeast Conference. But he was really critical against that Merrimack zone, which it's just different. Uh, it's a different kind of defense you have to face. You uh, and your staff had him in the high post mainly. He made a lot of good decisions out of the high post that really put us in position to win that game. And to have a player like that, you can have a scheme to attack a zone, but you need the, the players to be able to execute that scheme. And the thing about Josh is he can play in the high post and the low post. You know, and, and to be able to attack a zone, and specifically Merrimack zone, you got to be able to get some paint touches. You can't just rely on the, the three-point line right. and making jump shots. They take that away. They do. It's, it's good something, as anybody. Absolutely. It's, and, and not just in our league, but nationally. It's something that Joe's done a really good job of establishing that identity with his group. And uh, But to have someone like Josh who can play, and a lot of times it's with bodies. You know, and that's one of the, the, the challenges when you take a post player a lot of times coming to college, especially at this level. Playing in space with bodies is different. You can have a young man that looks great in one on or looks great in two on or maybe even one on one. But when you put nine other bodies around him, and that's what separates Josh because he can play with other bodies around him and in tight spaces on different parts of the floor. And you know, hopefully, we'll be able to you know to move him around a little bit here this weekend too in different spots and, and, and allow him to facilitate. But also, he does such a good job around the basket and his ball goes in and um, you know gives us a different weapon. Probably a byproduct because he hit that late growth spurt in high school, but he used to have to handle the ball. And you can see that when you don't have that space, probably uh, the beneficiary of those experiences when he was on the perimeter. And it's it's a skill. I, I don't think when his dad's tall, right, and his you know his family and they're they're, they're a tall family. And yeah, I, who know who knew that he was going to grow a foot over the over the course of a couple years, and his you know his, his development at a young age to be able to see the floor. And, and to be able to understand the game and, and, and to be his dad played in college and so I think he grew up around it and those things help as you progress because everybody's going to be tall or skilled as you go up in levels right, right? it's those those details and those experiences as, as a young kid that are starting to pay dividends for you talk about the opportunities a team has and how va how valuable possessions are how valuable the opportunity uh, and how they should appreciate the opportunity to play this game you have 23 games in we're guaranteed seven, and I'm borrowing your words, we get six regular season games. Everybody makes the postseason, so we're guaranteed at least one. Uh, are, are you uh, and the team talking at all about that and, and value these February opportunities? What we've talked about is continue to leave each day better than we found it. And to be a little bit better, we can't control the next seven. We can't control Thursday at this point. All we can control is our practice as we prepare for that trip and to try to keep these guys in a a mindset that yes we know that the end of the season something different is going to happen right with the playoffs and, and, and we they know those scenarios it's keeping them grounded and making sure that we're a little bit better today than we were yesterday and keep building on those things so that we can hit our stride you know we, we've kind of been in one of these little ups and downs but we still have those seven games left where we can show improvement individually and as a team and um, you know part of the part of the challenge for these guys is to continue to embrace that opportunity in practice and in a game with different circumstances with different lineups with different players available and making sure that each one of us focus on those details and the execution and the thing that we things we need to do to win that particular practice drill and game and but they've been they've been resilient. It's 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 a group that keeps coming back, and you know, it's neat to see too some new leaders starting to emerge, or new voices, not necessarily new leaders. But as, as as a program evolves, and as we build the program and continue to build the program, voices have to emerge, and sometimes they emerge in different uh, good players, right? Your best players. Maybe it's someone who's trying to fight for a spot. Maybe it's someone who's just still trying to figure college out. But to see those voices start to emerge in adversity 
is pretty is, is pretty unique and it's pretty cool because that 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 in Ronnie I'm using one of Ronnie Drennan's term that foxhole mentality right when you're in there with guys right you don't want people just talking when things are good your voice needs to be practiced and heard when things aren't going your way and then when things do go your way guys are going to tend to listen to you because you're consistent with when you speak up and it's neat to see some of these guys try that and, and, and step out of their comfort zone a little bit to be a voice and, and to hold each other accountable. And again, it's not something that shows up in a box score, but as a coach, it's, you know, those are some of the things that you look for as you look into the future and what is next. And you know, we, we can't look too far ahead, obviously, keep it day to day, but there are some things, Pat, that we've got to make sure that we do embrace looking long-term and try to develop those so when given the opportunity, they're ready. Rob, safe travels up to FDU. Good luck against the Knights. Looking forward to seeing the team here on Saturday against Mount St. Mary's. Absolutely. Thanks, Pat. Pat Farbaugh with St. Francis redshirt sophomore Luke Ruggery from Duncansville, Pennsylvania. His team, a couple of games this week, one on the road, one at home. Team is at Fairleigh Dickinson. We're taping this on Wednesday the 9th, fans. Uh, the team is at Fairleigh Dickinson tomorrow evening, Thursday, February 10th, before a home game against Mount St. Mary's on Saturday, February 12th. The FDU game at 7 p.m. The Mount game tips off at 4 p.m. Both are on Northeast Conference front row. Luke, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. Couple of close losses to Bryant and Merrimack at home last week. It was an overtime loss to Merrimack on Saturday afternoon, came down to the last possession. Uh, Luke played well in both of those games. In the Merrimack contest, fans, he made his first collegiate start and had a very strong game against the Bulldogs. 13 trays and 10 assists this year in double digits, 10 points against Bryant. Confidence, at least from my perspective, calling the games is growing. Do you feel that you're having more confidence in that shot and, and in just the minutes you've played feeling uh, a level of comfort on the floor? Yeah, definitely. I think that's helped a lot. And uh, just kind of getting in there and getting a feel for the game, you know, Playing on the defensive end, I think, really helps out because it gets me, you know, my feet wet, gets me kind of loose and ready to go. And then by the time we hit the offensive end, I feel like I'm pretty comfortable in that area. And these minutes, you know, definitely increase as the season has gone on. And I think that's helped out a lot for sure. Three trays against Merrimack. Had a four-point play uh, in that game. He's played in 19 games this year. Played in 18 games as a freshman. He's in his third year here at St. Francis. He is a redshirt sophomore and a finance and accounting major. What do you hope to do down the road in terms of your career? Uh, you know, I plan on getting my MBA and uh, pretty much go from there. So I really like the finance side of things. I actually have an accounting internship this summer. So we'll see how that goes, get a feel for some auditing, see how I like it, and then uh, go from there. So it's kind of a year by year type thing, you know, seeing what I like, seeing what I don't like, so. Talking to Luke Ruggery, Bishop Guilfoyle graduate, again in his third year at St. Francis, but before he left the Marauders program, uh, he made a name for himself. 27-3 and three the team was in 2018-19 under head coach Chris Drenning. They finished runner-up in AA in the state, and Luke was an all-state performer both as a junior and a senior. Despite missing the first half of his senior year with a back injury, they went to the finals in the PIAA, close loss to math, civics, and sciences, but made a lot of memories in that run. Yeah, definitely, for sure. That was probably uh, one of my favorite teams that year. You know, we had a close group of us, the, the five that we had that year, and uh, 
it was just really fun getting to play with them, getting to play with my brother. He was a junior on the team at the time, so it was a lot of, lot of good memories that year. Interesting that you mentioned your brother because Rob talks about family and there's so many connections, Luke. You played with Andy Helton's son, yes. Will. Andy's the assistant coach, one of the assistants for Rob. And you also played with Frank Montecalvo's son, Michael. Frank is the vice president for Innovative Partnerships. You came to camps here yep. as a kid. Uh, it must have felt like almost uh, an extension of home when you made your decision early in your high school career to come to SFU. Yeah, no, definitely it was. You know, I grew up around this program, came to a lot of games, always would drive up with the Monte Calvos, me, Kyle and uh, Mike and we would sit there watch the games go to the camps together every summer so it was definitely really uh, really nice and comfortable getting into this type of setting so it's been it's been a great time. Both your parents were standout players at BG Gina and Jay and your dad played at Penn State uh, Altoona I'm guessing there's a lot of basketball talk in the Ruggery household 24-7. Yes definitely all basketball no other sports I got a uh, Two other younger brothers here still going through the BG school system, and it's all basketball for them as well. Came close to a state title. Your high school won a state title in football yep. in the fall. Do you still have a chance to follow BG? You're immersed here at SFU, but do you still follow the Marauders? Yeah, of course. So uh, my brother's actually a sophomore for BG, and so I've been keeping up. I've been to make, been able to make a few games this year. Uh, seeing the Hague brothers doing great this year, they're playing really well. So we talk about family, the former head women's basketball coach, yep. Joe Hague's sons both play there. Yep, they've been playing really well for uh, Coach Drenning, and I know he's been having a good time, so hopefully they continue to have a great season. Yeah, it's just been fun being able to, you know, make my brother's games and even make a few Geniati games this year as well while still being able to do, you know, what I love and with this team here at St. Francis. So. Oh, your brother's making his mark. Uh, you're one of four, and your brother's making his mark at BG. Now you made your mark there and beginning to make your mark here at St. Francis. Uh, the wins will come. We're going through that phase where we're learning what the next step is going to be, and it's been fun to watch your development uh, over that progression. Yeah, I think we got a lot of young guys, you know, a lot of good players, and we're learning how to play as a team as each day goes by, and that's what really matters. And, you know, we keep putting these pieces together. I think we got a, we got a bright future ahead of us. Good luck against the Knights on Thursday at Teaneck, and we'll see you here against the Mount on Saturday. Yes, sir. Sounds good. Thank you.